the Kill Tony podcast. I don't know if you know what it is. Great comedians get together. They let amateurs come up and do one minute, and then they, they roast them, basically. It's, it's super fun to watch. Anyway, Amanda and I went on Saturday, last Saturday. She got to go up, and it was her first time doing stand-up in front of an audience, and she did pretty good. I think the, the Kill Tony guys were pretty amused. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So we took an Uber to get there, and the girl was really nice. But it, the, the air was funky in the Uber. It didn't smell bad. It was just like the heat was on just enough that like, okay, by the time we got to Dallas, which is like 20 minutes or something like that, literally you could see that my breath had fogged up the windows all the way around. We were like on the verge of breaking into that Scooby-Doo fog where you can cut through it with a knife inside of the Uber. So we get there, we get in line, we have preferred seating, so we get to go right in. So Amanda puts her name in the bucket and she kind of peeks in. She looks back at me. She's like, there's a lot of people in there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go up. If you guys watch Amanda on her Instagram story or know Amanda, you know that she's like super positive about everything. So she was just basically like, the universe is on my side. <laughs> that works for her. You know, I'm I'm not like that. I'm, I'm not. I look at problems and start figuring out what I'm going to have to do to solve them. And I have a hard time just saying, ah. It'll work itself out. That I have a hard time with that. But man is good at it. So we get in there and the host asks us where we want to sit. I'm like, just put us as close as you can put us. Uh, so literally, my feet were on the stage and Amanda sat right behind me. It's weird at the comedy club. They pack everybody in there. So instead of sitting next to each other, like Amanda's like right over my shoulder. So these guys come out on stage and there they are in person. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to see like your favorite band and been able to sit at the front row. But it was a similar experience to that. When, when these guys came out, you're like, oh, it's really them. So these guys came out and there they are. It's the Tony Hinchcliffe, Brian Redband, and the band is uh, Jeremiah Watkins, Patty Reagan, and Joel Berg, uh, Joel Jimenez. Pretty much, I'm just laughing instantly because these guys are always funny. Like, I'm just instantly triggered to start laughing. So the, the amateur comedians start coming up and everything's funny to me. Uh, I wouldn't say that they were great comedians. Some of them were good. There was a whole group that had come from Arkansas and three of them got to come up, which was pretty cool. I mean, they made it a long way. Uh, but so, you know, act after act, I would look back at Amanda and I could tell she was getting more, more and more discouraged. Like, she was like, I don't think I'm gonna get to go up. And I was like, I think the universe is on your side. But man, I was really thinking, oh man, she's not gonna get to go up. She, she literally been rewriting and practicing. I mean, she was ready. So the night goes on and I, I'm looking at my watch and I'm thinking this thing's over in 10 minutes. Uh, they go, they pull the last name out of the bucket, which by the way, it wasn't a purple pumpkin. I was a little bit disappointed. They pull the last name out of the bucket and it's Amanda Brown. So Amanda goes up and does her minute and hits all the punches right on. It was, it was awesome. I was really proud. It was super cool. And um, her act is sort of like a clean way of telling dirty jokes. So they seem pretty amused, honestly, and it gave them something fun to play with when they asked her weird questions. Uh, I was a little surprised though. They were, they, were, they were pretty kind to her. I've seen them really rip some girls on the other episodes, so they were pretty nice to Amanda. Maybe it's because I was sitting right there. I was thinking like, there's like maybe an unspoken code of husbands. Like when there's more than one husband in the room, like you don't pick on the other one's wife. So I don't know, maybe I was throwing off their game. I hope not, sorry guys if I was. But anyway, Amanda got to go up, it was super cool, and then afterwards she got to meet a few of the guys. She started tweeting and Instagram and all that. They've been retweeting her stuff, so that's super cool. Uh, she's gonna go big time. We're going big time, guys. So we get an Uber to go home, and I don't know about you, but I feel like you're not supposed to have to talk to the Uber driver, and that they're supposed to kind of leave you alone, but this guy starts talking instantly, and he talks for long enough that when he finally stops, I feel like I have to respond. So we end up having this 30 minute conversation about how ladies that are teachers are wild women when they're not at school. And uh, it, it was fun, I gotta be honest, I enjoyed, the, I enjoyed the banter. By the way, if you haven't already subscribed and you're watching this, hit the subscribe button right now. I am on the pledge drive to 1,000. I think I need about 60. So if you're watching this video back in a year or two and I've got a million subscribers, I only have about 1,000 right now. So anyway, I'm glad you tuned in and as always, I'm Birdsneck, thanks for watching.